good morning everyone for this yet another episode on monoclonal antibodies from transconnect i am dr mohit chaudhary and i'll be accompanied with my colleague uh, dr k jaya gauri who will be talking about not only the monoclonal antibodies the polyclonal antibodies and the hybridoma technology so this is a very important topic which needs to be understood uh, and uh, uh, we'll also run through a small biochemistry associated with it so uh, you need to listen to that and uh, hopefully you'll be able to understand this important topic which is also a long answer question in your exam so what is polyclonal and what is monoclonal antibodies so coming to what is polyclonal antibodies when an antigen antigen we all know uh, is able to elicit an immune response so when an antigen is exposed to a species different b cells will produce antibody to different epitopes of the antigen so antigens have epitopes on them and it is the epitope to which an antibody is produced it is not again against an antigen it is on the epitopes that are present on the antigens now just to add to it antigens have two two types of epitopes on it one is a public epitope and a private epitope so public epitope is an epitope which is shared by different antigens and they have like uh, a common common epitope between them so antibody when produced it will be against both the antigens sharing the epitopes similarly we have a private epitope which is restricted to a specific antigen so if one antigen has a specific private epitope it is it is pertinent to that antigen so antibody will not cross react it will be pertinent to that epitope on the antigen so the point to remember here is the antibody is always formed in response to an epitope and not an antigen plus there are epitopes which are public and there are epitopes which are private now the sera of the immunized individual will contain different antibodies that recognize different sites of antigen and thereby their epitopes such antibodies are called polyclonal because they are produced from different clones of b cells so just a pictorial representation of this uh, kindly uh, excuse the image it, it is a goat here and this animal this goat is injected with an immunogen which is actually an antigen plus an adjuvant which will increase the dose of the antigen so you give booster infection injections every 2 3 weeks until a proper titer of antibody is reached so you can see there are different types of antibodies here it's not restricted to one antibodies and it is pertaining to the epitopes that are present on that antigen that which we have injected so after that the blood from the animal is harvested you have the blood then you separate the sera you isolate the serum and this sera will contains these antibodies now you need to purify the same so the serum is processed and purified and you what you get is a polyclonal antibody population so this is how a polyclonal antibodies formation takes place coming to monoclonal antibodies i would like to invite my colleague dr k jaya gauri who is going to take through through the monoclonal antibodies part and uh, also some part of the biochemistry involved with it hello everyone so we'll be going into the video we'll be dealing about monoclonal antibodies now monoclonal antibodies are those antibodies that are produced from a single clonal cell line recognizing a single specific epitope of the antigen of interest that is monoclonal antibodies will actually be the antibodies that are produced from one type of plasma cell that is the cloned b cell which recognized one antigen so these monoclonal antibodies provide useful reagents to detect specific molecules of interest in various laboratories the monoclonal antibodies are basically produced by a technology called the hybridoma technology so in order to understand the hybridoma technology we need to see some biochemistry basics so nucleotide synthesis basically happens to two main pathways one is the de novo synthesis and the other is the salvage pathway the de novo synthesis is a highly conserved process of nucleotide production which is produced from activated ribose that is phosphoribosyl pyrophosphate atp carbon dioxide and various amino acids the salvage pathway is nothing but a recycling pathway when cells when the lifetime of when the lifetime of cells gets over they are broken down while breakdown the cells release nucleic acid these nucleic acids further results in release of adenine guanine and hypoxanthine these uh, nucleosides 
recycle themselves to produce further nucleotides this process of recycling is the salvage pathway now please don't get overwhelmed by these pathways in order to understand hat medium we'll be dealing with little bit of basics okay so as we can see here on the right side is the de novo synthesis of purines on the left side is the de novo synthesis of pyrimidines now purines are produced from the ribose 5 phosphate through various pathways which end up in imp that is inosine monophosphate this imp is the starting point to produce amp that is adenosine monophosphate and gmp that is guanosine monophosphate this amp and gmp further gets phosphorylated to form atp and gtp as we all know we need atp and gtp for dna synthesis thereby replication and survival of any cell for that matter so in this pathway as we can see the aminoptrin that is a compound which will be present in the hat media that we will be discussing now the aminoptrin inhibits the locations wherever folate is used that is aminoptrin is a dihydrofolate reductase inhibitor that is it inhibits an enzyme that produces tetrahydrofolate which is needed as a substrate for two three locations so in purine synthesis there are two different locations where aminoptrin inhibits as we see the de novo synthesis of pyrimidines there is one location where folate is inhibited by aminoptrin as a result of this inhibition there is no production of imp thereby no production of atp and gtp in case of pyrimidine pathway there is no production of tmp what happens is these cells cannot produce purines and pyrimidines through de novo synthesis so what is the other pathway that is present salvage pathway so in order to produce atp gtp and ttp through salvage pathway we need substrates that is hypoxanthine and thymidine these two substrates hypoxanthine and thymidine are provided by the hat media the h stands for hypoxanthine the t stands for thymidine now in order to produce atp and gtp from hypoxanthine we need an enzyme called hypoxanthine guanine phosphoribosyl transferase now presence of this the cells that contain this enzyme can utilize the hypoxanthine in the media to produce atp and gtp the other enzyme that we need is the thymidine synthase thymidine synthase enzyme is basically being inhibited by aminoptrin therefore thymidine is produced ttp from thymidine is produced by thymidylate kinase so the cells that contain thymidylate kinase will be selected in the hat media so the cells in the media are inhibited from producing nucleotides using de novo synthesis therefore the cells are pushed to produce an alternate pathway that is the salvage pathway the substrates of salvage pathway are hypoxanthine and thymidine which are already present in the hat media so right enzymes are needed for utilizing the substrates so the cell selection happens based on the enzymes available within the cell that is for producing purines we need the enzyme hgprtas and for producing pyrimidine we need thymidine kinase so coming to the detail of hybridoma technology so it begins with immunizing a mouse with the antigen of interest we and we perform multiple sessions of immunization until an appropriate titer is achieved this immunization happens through intraperitoneal injections so uh, once the antigen has been inserted there will be antibody production by the mouse this antibody production can be confirmed by performing titer tests the spleen of the mouse is then taken cultivated in a culture media along with myeloma tumor cells the splenic cells and the myeloma tumor cells are found are made to fuse together with the help of polyethylene glycol so this polyethylene glycol leads to three consequences one is the unfused b cell of the spleen number two is the myeloma tumor cells that we added number three is the perfectly fused hybridoma cells as we can see in this picture the antigen of interest is inserted the mouse begins to produce antibody with their plasma cells the plasma cells that is the spleen of the mouse is taken and made to fuse with the myeloma tumor cells that we provide 
the fusion is facilitated by polyethylene glycol the fused hybridoma cells are then selected based on the hat media this hybridoma cells that produce individual individual type of antibody is then isolated the isolation takes place in such a way that they are multiple that they undergo multiple dilution that is from one well they are diluted 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 by further dilution what happens is there will be only one cell in a well now that cell will produce a single type of antibody when the superinduced fluid of the well is measured we will get the appropriate antibody and the best antibody based on its quantity its strength etc like valency is determined and the particular well is selected for further production so in order to select the fused hybridoma cell we we perform something called cell selection this cell selection is done by the hat media as we saw already the hat media contains hypoxanthine which is a purine derivative aminopterin which is a folate inhibitor and thymidine which is a deoxynucleoside so aminopterin is a folate inhibitor that inhibits the de novo synthesis that we already saw in this video therefore salvage pathway has to undergo in salvage pathway the substrates are hypoxanthine and thymidine which are been already provided in the media so what happens is that the myeloma cell does not contain thymidine thymidine kinase or hgpatas enzyme therefore the myeloma cell dies the plasma cell that is the splenic cell contains the enzyme for salvage pathway but still it dies because it is a normal cell with a limiting lifespan and therefore limiting replicative cycle so the hybridoma cell that was fused with the uh, that was formed as a result of fusion will survive because it has the immortality of the myeloma cell and the enzymes of the plasma cell therefore it survives the hat media and thereby fused hybridoma cells can be selected based on its survival in the hat media now this b cell myeloma hybrids not only produce antibodies but are also immortal therefore these cells keep on continuously producing antibodies the culture plate with the final b cell myeloma hybrids is diluted to multiple well plates the superintendent is tested for antibodies the antibodies in one well will produce one type of antibody that is monoclonal antibodies the finalized colony is cultured to produce further antibodies now there are multiple different newer methods of monoclonal antibody production the first thing is the heterohybridoma that is the wbcs of an rh sensitized individual is immortalized along with epstein barr virus this leads to generation of human antibodies rather than mouse the next thing is humanized mouse that is a severe combined immunodeficiency mice is infused with a wbc of humans this method is used to produce tetanus toxoid and some group b and rhd antigens next thing is genetic engineering that is the antibody with the antigen binding site of the mouse is maintained while the ig immunoglobulin structure will be that of the human the antibody binding site will be that of the mouse this minimizes the development of anti mouse antibody and has better therapeutic potential thank you